about the extraordinary life and very special life, but unlucky one, of a one particular race team player. It all started in the summer of 2002. I was with my sister, and we had decided it was time to cross skydiving off our bucket list. We hopped in our blue Honda Accord, and we embarked on a journey to far, far east, eastern Massachusetts, and headed to a uh, skydive place right out there. We, my sister drove, and it gave me plenty of time to mentally prepare for, for the day ahead. And in my head, I'm thinking, should I do three flips out of plane, maybe two flips? <sighs> Big decision. I don't know how I'm going to do this. I, I look over at my sister Rachel, ask her how she's feeling, and she's freaking out. She's like, I don't know if I'm going to be able to go through with this. I'm thinking she'd be such a winner. We get to we get to the place about about 10:30, a little before our appointment, or just before 10:30. And I didn't eat much that morning because I figured I'm going to be back on the ground by 11. What's the big deal? Plenty of time to shout out. And then we wait, and we do some paperwork, and then we wait some more. Continue waiting, then we do some training, we keep waiting. At this point, I'm getting pretty hungry. And so fortunately, right outside the waiting room is a table of food for sale. And it's perfect, this is gonna hit the spot. The fact that it looks like it's from the 7-Eleven down the street, that's just, just <laughs> details, how hungry. I look for the, the most delicious thing I can see, and I pick it up, already roasted spinach. I, am, I put that thing down in about one minute flat. Oh. Yeah, that was great. Just as I finish, I hear on the PA system, our group next. All right. At this point, we're getting ready for final preparations, and I meet John, my tandem partner. So if anyone hasn't gone skydiving before, you partner with a professional skydiver, they're tandem, they're strapped to your back and kind of in control. That guy for me was John. So we were walking to the, the plane. John asked how I'm feeling today. And I'm telling him, I feel great. I can't wait to jump out of this plane. We move up. Climb into the metallic small cargo plane. I look back at my sister. She's got a face of fright. I'm thinking, this is going to be hard. I wonder if she's even going to get on that plane. Get in the plane. We load up. We start climbing. We're looking at our altimeter. We've got 3,000 feet, 5,000 feet, 10,000 feet. Finally, 13,000 feet. Jump point. We all start lining up for the door one at a time. Everyone gets ready to jump out. Fall the plane. We're gone immediately. One at a time. Boom, boom, boom. Finally, my sister gets to the door. Looks like her eyes are gonna pop out of her head, but inevitably she ends up jumping out as well. It's my turn, I'm up next. John and I get ready to hold on to my straps and my, my parachute. One, two, three, and out, out the door. Immediately, you're just in terminal velocity. Wind rushing through your hair, it's, this is unbelievable. You can see for miles on the horizon, which is fantastic. It goes by in a split second, even though we've been free falling for a minute. I felt like the fastest minute of my life. Finally, we pull the, John pulls the, the parachute open. We start a canopy ride. Then John tells me, let's catch up to your sister. For those that haven't been on a parachute ride or canopy ride, this is how it works. You have two cords that direct you. You pull hard on the left, you go left. Pull hard on the right, you go right. Now, if you pull really hard on one side, you're going to go really fast in that direction. So fast that if you do one full 360 degree turn, you fall 1,000 feet. Now is how you catch up to someone that's right below you. <laughs> so again, John says, all right, let's catch your sister. <clears throat> Pulls hard on the left, and so my stomach starts <laughs> a little bit. And then he goes, okay, now to the right. <clears throat> he goes, all right, one more time down there. John, hold on. <laughs> I don't feel so good. He goes, uh, you all right? I, I don't know. I just feel kind of kind of sick. Yeah. Hold on, don't worry about it. I've gone through this before. Here's what we're going to do. You're going to look to the left. I'm going to look to the right. If you feel the need to be sick, you just, you just let it go. So that comforted me a little bit. And for the moment, as I'm looking to the left, I'm thinking, ah, maybe I'll get through this. Maybe I'll get. Oh. Oh. And about 5,000 feet in there, I let go. <laughs> so once I finally, finally finish and let it all out, I hear John drop behind me. Oh, oh, nasty. We finally make it down to the earth, make it down to the ground. I see my sister landing before me, frolicking through the field. Eric, wasn't that unbelievable? Wasn't that the best? Oh, it looks so good. It's on your face. 
Well, you know, uh, needless to say, it wasn't one of my best moments, but <laughs> there is a happy ending. Fast forward 10 years later, the last spring, a friend of mine organized a group outing with some friends for a skydiving trip we had never done. So finally, I was going to have this opportunity to know, was it, was it me? Can I not handle skydiving? Or was it, was it simply just the roast beef sandwich? We can finally find out. We go to the skydiving place. Guy, this time it's, his name is, is uh, Mitch, and Mitch asks me, you ready to go? And I tell him, yeah, I'm ready, just one ask is, let's not spin really fast on the canopy ride. And he gives me a funny look, it, have you been sick before doing that? I sort of hesitated, he read my body language and said, look, there's a rule, is that if you're sick, if you feel sick as you're going down, you lift up your jumpsuit, you lift up your t-shirt underneath, and you throw off right in there. Oh, Jesus. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so this, is, this is a true story. So I, I've decided this is called the roast beef sandwich rule. It's named after me. Anyways, we finally jump, and I'm happy to report the mystery solved. Land safely on the ground, rope free, and I can loudly proclaim that I was okay. It was merely just the extraordinary life of one very special roast beef sandwich. Thank you.